Good morning, class 10. Welcome back. This is your Yogi sir. We is teaching you English through online class. Today is Tuesday and uh, we have English literature to continue. Before we continue or uh, catch up our last uh, chapter that we were discussing in our textbook Treasure Trove, uh, there is a few information regarding your syllabus as uh, revised by the council. Uh, so the textbook drama The Merchant of Venice written by William Shakespeare uh, stands a complete uh, textbook for your syllabus. Uh, there is no uh, change uh, in uh, the syllabus for the textbook. So there are uh, five acts, act one to act five, and all the acts are compulsory uh, uh, to be completed uh, for your uh, session. And uh, to talk about our treasure trove, from the prose section where we have solid stories, out of the 10 chapters that you have in a syllabus, one chapter is omitted by the council. So the chapter is the blue bit and in fact this is the chapter we are doing last to complete our textbook treasure trove. <coughs> Anyways we are uh, uh, more or less going to complete this story so I just want to complete it uh, that uh, even if uh, the question may come in the paper you would be easy to answer any question asked in this chapter right. So that leaves us nine uh, stories to be completed for your uh, for your session that uh, started um, since class nine. And uh, from the poetry section, out of the ten points that we have in the syllabus, uh, one of the poem one of the points got uh, omitted. That is poem number seven. I know why the cage bird sings. Written by my Angelo. Uh, so that leaves us nine points uh, in your syllabus, right? And uh, I guess there is no worry uh, regarding the points because we have already completed uh, 10 of uh, uh, the uh, points uh, as prescribed by the council in the syllabus, right? So anyways, you got uh, one uh, poem list to uh, prepare uh, for your boards. So uh, that is uh, much... Uh, favorable thing that the council has done uh, for uh, uh, you all this session uh, and uh, now let us come back to uh, talk about the remaining portion of the chapter the blue bit uh, as we have already uh, started and we are uh, in the last uh, uh, part of the chapter uh, so let us uh, complete this chapter though it is not included uh, for a syllabus. So if you remember uh, we were on page number 99 uh, in our last online class uh, we are doing Nada Burke's uh, interesting story the blue bid and uh, in our last class we saw uh, the protagonist who is a 12 year old girl Sibia by her name uh, along with her mother and the other uh, women of the Gujar encampment, they have uh, done their task of uh, cutting the paper grass and uh, they have now stepped down when they saw uh, the sun is uh, about to set because uh, they still have some more of the task at home uh, to be done because uh, the night meal they have to prepare and uh, uh, they also have to feed, uh, cook and feed the livestock that uh, they have uh, uh, at home and uh, for that uh, they need to reach back home. Uh, as early as possible. So the group of women uh, now stepped down uh, to the foothills and thereafter took the same way uh, <clears throat> crossing the river uh, to the other side. Uh, as we saw there is no breeze. They have to uh, step um, onto the stones uh, uh, in the river and they have to cross it. So when all of the women along with the CBS mother have uh, uh, crossed the river uh, Sibia was left behind and it was uh, her voluntary uh, 
a trial to be uh, to be left behind because he wanted to see the uh, <clears throat> the bowls the earthen bowls which uh, perhaps he had uh, kept in the cables so as to dry in the um, in the sun mm. and uh, what do they do with this uh, uh, earthen made bowls we have already seen uh, when these uh, bowls get dried in the sun's heat uh, they take them back and thereafter they color and also design uh, in these poles uh, with the beautiful flowers uh, and so on right so cbi stayed behind to check uh, her uh, bowls in the cabinets and uh, that is why she is uh, quite late uh, uh, to uh, i mean accompany the group of women who have already crossed the river now right now when she had <clears throat> now uh, realized that she is left behind now she uh, carries the load back right the paper uh, grass which she is uh, uh, carrying at her back there is also the sickle there is uh, um, the hay fork and uh, you notice that the hay fork was giving a slight problem to Sibia because uh, the uh, the fork of the hay was uh, piercing at her uh, neck which she had uh, actually tried to pad up uh, uh, against it with the help of uh, uh, the folded sari right so let us now see what happens uh, in the com uh, in the uh, completion of this chapter so let's see so let me read out the last uh, uh, paragraph on page 99 that we left in our last day class when she was halfway over <clears throat> she put her load down on a big boulder to rest and leaned breathing on the fork so when she has reached half of the river to cross uh, she seemed to be quite uh, uh, tired of her uh, load so she took uh, a boulder support a uh, stones support she placed her uh, uh, i mean the load uh, at uh, or against the rock and was uh, taking uh, the breathe and also she was uh, having a problem with the fork because it was piercing her right now what happened see we are on the other page 100 see <clears throat> at the same moment a guzu woman came down with two gudras to the water on the other side so what she noticed that from the other end the other side of the river there a guzu woman reached she carried two gudras now what are gudras gudras are the pots right and these pots are used by this women in order to carry water from the river back to their homes right so uh, she noticed a guzur woman who carried two gurras right to the water to fetch uh, water from there on the other side of the river right so they are uh, metal made gurras or they are uh, earthen made gurras so you see in order to get the good clear water which would quickly fill both gurras to the top with her sand she walked on to the stepping stones so what her idea was right she did not fill the uh, fill the pitcher or fill the gurras uh, from the bank of the river water right because uh, you know that on the bank uh, the water gets uh, sandy right there are dust particles so she thought better that she would step onto the uh, middle of the river where she would get a clear water pure water right so she stepped uh, on the stones with her uh, two gurras carried with her so as to get the fresh water from the mid of the river right then she she was within a yard of the crocodile when he lunged at her but she did not know who was waiting for her there right there was the crocodile waiting for the prey right and as he neared uh, uh, the crocodile unknown to her that there was a crocodile right she just bent with a gurras to fill it and as she was bent to fill the gurras right the crocodile lunged at her lunge means the crocodile pounced at her suddenly right the crocodile moved suddenly towards her to attack up out of the darkling water hit the great reptile and what did cbia see right from the other end right she was uh, seeing all this she was waving all this up out of the darkling water because uh, the water has already uh, uh, been dark because uh, the sun is about to set we already know that it was the late evening time so water hipped hipped means lifted when the body of the crocodile got raised out of water right the uh, the water also splashed up lifted up right water slushing off him slushing means 
partly falling on both the sides of the crocodile's body, right? So his livid jaws, livid means pale and angry jaws because uh, uh, the crocodile was waiting for the prey since it was hungry, right? So his livid jaws yawning, so it was with the open mouth, right? Yawning means open mouth to attack the uh, guzzle woman and all his teeth flashing as he slashed at her leg and all his teeth were seen, right? Uh, uh, bright white as he slashed, as he cut the leg of the woman, right? The woman screamed and when the crocodile attacked her at her leg, right? She screamed, she shouted with pain because it all happened suddenly unknown to her. She did not know that there was crocodile, right? Uh, hidden in the water and was ready to attack her, right? The woman screamed, she shouted loudly, dropped both brass pots with a clatter on the boulder. And as there was a pain, right, at her feet, right, at her leg, where the crocodile had uh, clutched her, right, dropped both brass pots with a clatter. Both of the uh, gurras uh, fell from her hands, right, producing the clattering sound of the stones, right? Clatter is and the rattling sound because uh, those gurras were made of metal, right? And as the, the gurras fell off her hand, right, they splashed, right, they hit on the stones, producing the clattering sound. From whence they bounced to the water and the pitcher, since it was unfilled, right, she so was only going to fill those gurras since they were empty. So the fallen, right, gurras jumped on the um, on the uh, uh, stones and fell off the water right and Sibia saw them bob away in the current and Sibia saw the gurras were carried flow uh, I mean flowed down by the current of water right the gurras were taken right they were swept by the running water oh the two good faces gone and how did Sibia feel Sibia felt so bad on seeing those gurras being carried away by the current of water they were beautiful Right, good as, right? But now they are gone, right? The guzzle woman recoiled from the crocodile. Now the guzzle woman, out of pain, she recoiled, recoiled means she jumped back from the crocodile because she also wanted to free her self okay, from the clutch of the crocodile, right? Because life is precious to everybody, right? Everybody wants to live life unmindful of what uh, problem you are in. So you see, the Guzur woman recoiled from the crocodile. She also wanted to free from the uh, from the uh, clutch of the crocodile, right? But uh, his jaws closed on her on her leg at the same moment as he slipped and fell on the bone breaking stone. But look at her; she was helpless, right? The jaws of the crocodile were very uh, firm, very solid, right? They closed on her leg. That means she was caught by the leg, where she could not free herself now, right? And she was dragged. So she slipped and fell on the bone breaking stone, right? So what uh, pain might have been that moment? And after all, she was a lady. She was a, she was a woman, right? And clutch one of the timber locks to save herself. And luckily there was a timber. Timber is a log that was uh, uh, brought down by the running water, right? And had got the stock in between the two uh, stones, right? So she was lucky to hold that, right? Against the pull of the uh, crocodiles, uh, uh, I mean clutch, right? The log jammed between two boulders. The log had stuck in between the two stones, right? When with the woman clinging to it and with the woman holding tightly to the log because as I said, life is precious to everyone, right? She also tried herself uh, the best she could free from the uh, clutching of these crocodile's jaws. To it and screaming, but on the other side she was crying with pain, she was shouting with pain, she was shouting for help while the crocodile pulled on her leg. On the other side, crocodile was pulling her by her leg. So it was as if it was a tug of, it was a game of tug of war. Both of them are pulling against each other, right? <clears throat> threshing her might tail and she was, uh, she was threshing, she was splashing her uh, mighty tail, right, in the water. And you know that when the crocodile is in the water, the strength of the crocodile becomes double, right, as it is seen, right, and the tail portion of uh, uh, the crocodile becomes very dangerous, as we all know, right, and it was uh, threshing, right, with all its might in the 
uh, running water right and uh, with the sound bang bang so see to and fro in great smacking flails as he tried to drag her free and carry her off down into the deeps of the pool right and it was trying to make its pool to and fro right in great smacking flails flails means swing it was moving its uh, uh, tail swinging it as it tried to drag as it tried to pull her free right and carry her off down into the deeps of the pool and so that he could uh, carry this uh, victim this uh, woman right uh, down into the water right and uh, you know that whenever uh, the crocodile uh, catches the prey uh, it uh, rolls right so as to tear uh, the prey into pieces right uh, that might have been uh, the trial of this crocodile right now right uh, since the woman had caught hold of the um, the timber the log uh, that was stuck in between the uh, boulders right uh, so um, it probably saved uh, her life so far right so kokoral was not able to uh, pull uh, her freely as uh, uh, it could do right let's see blood spread everywhere so it was blood and blood everywhere it was red and red singing in the water right so how painful might uh, um, be uh, the cause with the woman now you see sibia sprang so seeing this sibia was watching all this sibia now could hold uh, uh, i mean no control of herself right so she sprang sibia jumped right suddenly from boulder to boulder and where did she jump she jumped from one stone to another right she came leaping like a rock goat and she came jumping like a very how you can say happy goat right we jumps out of happiness from one stone to another stone sometimes it had seemed difficult to cross these stones right and sometimes it had been very difficult to cross these stones because one stone was very far away from the other one yet sivia uh, jumped with all her might especially the big gap in the middle where the river pours through like a bagel of glass right and the stones were so far that the water ran in between right which was like a bagel of glass it was shiny right but uh, the gap did not matter for sibia right now right so he gave everything uh, herself right to uh, reach to the woman as early as possible but now she came on wings so she was as if she was flying there okay she was with the wings choosing her footing in mid air without even thinking about it so she did not think anything right now what she saw was only the uh, problem with the woman okay and in one moment she was beside the shrieking woman and within no time with just the blink of an eye she reached where the woman was shrieking where the woman was crying with pain right and there was a tug of war that was going on between the crocodile and the guzzle woman now see <clears throat> in the boiling bloody water why it is called bloody water because it was full of blood right that oozed out from the leg of the woman which was uh, uh, clutched by the jaw of the crocodile the face of the crocodile you see fastened round her leg so the crocodile had not left right uh, its clutch it is still holding the leg of the guzzle woman <clears throat> was tugging to and fro and smiling and was tugging tugging means pulling the crocodile was trying to pull to and fro and it was as if smiling because it has found a prey right several so women crossed and uh, the crocodile was waiting for a chance right perhaps he was waiting who the single woman would cross right and since it had got it now right and it was uh, very happy right that it had found the prey but you see what happened her his eyes rolled on to sibia okay but then another young lady reached there with sibia right jumping near by the second woman so crocodile's eyes right rolled to look at sibia one slap of the tail could kill her right and if the crocodile would have moved its tail right it would have killed sibia as well okay but what happened you see he struck up shot the water 20 feet and fell like a silver chain right so uh, the crocodile showed his anger right it uh, tried to uh, i mean um, use the tail right and as it used the tail the water splashed up 20 feet right and fell like a silver chain right that uh, dangerous moment right was around sibia again you see the rock jumped under the blow 
but in the daily heroism of the jungle as common as a thorn tree Sibia did not hesitate but look at the might look at the uh, boldness of uh, the small child Sibia right as he was uh, uh, not a cowardice right in her uh, uh, nature right she stood valiant she stood heroic in her work as he was never uh, deterred to do any difficulty right she did not hesitate uh, hesitate right to be there now see she aimed at the reptile's eyes right so she looked at the reptile's eyes and we know that the authoress had already told us which are the two uh, weaknesses of uh, the crocodile one is their eyes the other underarm right so sibia aimed targeted the eyes of the crocodile the weakest part of the crocodile with all the force of her little body she drove the hair fork at the eyes so she took out the hair fork the tool that is used for uh, 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 you uh, the uh, the i mean uh, to collect the hay right when they are cut okay so see so she took out in her hand which she had and then she raised her arm and with the full force she gave in one of the eyes of the crocodile and one prong went in and one prong prong means uh, the very pointed part of the uh, the very pointed part of the uh, um, the fork right like needle went inside the eye of the crocodile right and it went right in while its pair stretched fast from the honichi right and the other um, i mean teeth of uh, uh, the uh, the hair fork right nearly uh, scratched the horny part the skin of the uh, crocodile just near the eye so one uh, one tooth of the hair entered in the eye the other scratched the side of the eye right the crocodile reared up in convulsion so when it received the pain right the co crocodile jumped up reared up raised in convulsion in convulsion means there was a sudden movement of the, the crocodile right till half his rigid body was out of the river so half of the size of the crocodile was out of the river the tail and nose nearly meeting right over his stony back so this was the movement right showed by uh the crocodile that means the crocodile got hurt badly hurt since it had got in the weakest part of his body the eye right then he crashed back and then after he fell down in the river exploding the water and in an uproar of bloody foam he disappeared right and when the crocodile fell back into the river there was this splash of water right and within no time the very portion where it had fallen became uh, bloody right and it vanished the crocodile disappeared vanished right this is how sibia uh, heroically saved the life of the guzzar woman who was nearly uh, you can say eaten up by the hungry crocodile then see he would die that was the assumption right not yet but presently so it would not die now but the tissue of that crocodile though his death would not be known for days right it would be unknown when this crocodile will die now since it had already got pain in the eye not till his stomach blown with gas floated him so how do you know the crocodile's death when we will see the crocodile is turned upside down the yellowish part the yellowish whitish part of the body will be upside down and uh, the very stomach will be bulged right blown with gas and then the water will carry right uh, the dead body of the crocodile to one side of it then perhaps he would be found upside down along the among the logs at the timber boom with pus in his eyes pus is the yellowish liquid that is uh, 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 that is uh, uh, you can say uh, from the uh, from the pain or from the sore right so that would happen that would be seen in the uh, crocodile so there was the expectation that the crocodile would die but when it will die right it is unknown right but it is going to die some day or the other then see since it had already got hit in the eye and uh, uh, it is now suffering 
So see, Sibia got her arms around the fainting woman. And the next thing what Sibia did was, after this heroic work, right, she then helped the Guzal woman, right? She uh, got uh, uh, the woman up in her arms, supported her. She, the woman was about uh, to be unconscious. She was fainting. She was swooning. You see, and somehow dragged her from the water, and somehow Sibia managed to pull her out of the water. Right? She stopped her wounds with sand and bound them with rag. And she went with the traditional therapy to treat this wound, where uh, the very painful teeth of the crocodile uh, had, um, I mean, okay, brought brought the wound in her injury in her uh, leg. Right? So she stopped her wounds with the sand. So she applied sand. Right? On her wound. And where uh, the crocodile had bitten okay, her leg and bound them with rag and she torn the piece of cloth and she had tightened around that wound. And helped her home to the Guzar encampment and after that she took the woman to her Guzar camp encampment. Where the men made a litter to carry her to someone for treatment. And there remember, the men were there. They had also come back okay, from their respective works. Right? As we know that the men go out uh, uh, to do their work right and the women also carry on with their work to go for uh, paper cutting right grass and then bring back right so by then the men had all come down right so when they saw the wounded woman Guzi woman they made litter litter means is a uh, you can say <coughs> bed a rough made bed out of bamboo or any wood you can say so as to um, carry the uh, the injured woman who would be lying on this bed Right? And that would be carried by the four of four men, right, on their shoulders. So they took her to the uh, village healer, who would do the treatment on her uh, wound now, right. So this is how Sibia saved her life. Okay. Then Sibia went back for her grass and sickle and fork and look at, right, the very, uh, um, very very uh, brave, valiant Sibia, right. She did not uh, take her way to her home, being afraid of coming back to the river. Right? But she came back to the river again right? after dropping the woman for a treatment. Then Sibia went back for a grass because her bundle of grass is still there and sickle is also there and fork perhaps is dropped in the water now after she had hit the eye of the crocodile. The fork was lying in the river, <clears throat> not carried away. So she came back to the river and she looked inside the river. She saw the fork inside the river. Right? It was not carried away by the force of the water. Luckily, as uh, she uh, bent to pick it up out of the water, she saw the blue bit and when she bent to pick up that uh, um, <coughs> instrument, right, uh, the very fork, right, she saw blue bit inside the water, right, it was the surprise for her now, not a blue one, not uh, blue now, with the sun nearly gone, but uh, no color white blue. But it's not exactly bluish right now because the sun has now uh, gone. The sun has now set, right? So it is quite whitish in the look now. White is blue now. And its shape bubbling in the movement of uh, the stream. And its shape bubbling. That means, and the shape of the uh, very blue bit was uh, unsteady. It was uh, quivering, right? In the movement of the water, in the movement of the river. <coughs> She reached her arm down into a, into a yard of the cold silk water to get it. So she put her hand to take it out. The water was cold. Right? Then she missing it first of all because of the refraction. So she missed it because uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, I mean, uh, not exactly to the place where it was. It was uh, the fact of the light refraction. Right? So she was putting her hand inside thinking that it is there. But exactly the material, the blue bead was on the other side. Right, then see, then there it lay in her wet palm, perfect, even pierced, ready for use. But finally she got it out, right? She found it was very perfect, it was very nice, right? Uh, there was the hole also made into it, ready for the use. You did not need for the needle to uh, pierce a hole into it. With the sunset suffered about inside it like gold dust. So with the sunset suffered, suffered means to walk. Uh, you can say dragging his body about inside it like gold dust so it was a kind of gold inside the uh, river what she got all her heart went up in flames of joy she was very very happy to see this blue bit 
right? So whatever hard work she had done a few minutes ago, she forgot when she got the reward, right? That was the blue bit. After a bit, she twisted it into the top of her skirt against her tummy so she would know if it burst through the poor cloth and fell, right? And what did she, what did she do then? She then picked it up, the blue bit, and kept inside the, where? Uh, her skirt, right? Which was folded, right? And uh, since uh, uh, she could feel it, that there is something she kept uh, uh, un, uh, in her tummy, the stomach, right? She would be knowing it, that it is still there, right? So, uh, she would know it, okay, if it had fallen, because uh, she could still feel uh, the bid uh, where she had kept it near, uh, near the waist. Okay, then she picked up her fork and sickle and the heavy grass and set off home. Thereafter, she picked up the sickle, the fork, and the load, the grass, the pepper grass, and then she started going towards her home. A, A, what a day. So she is very happy, right? What a day was it for her, right? There was a heroic task that she uh, did and uh, showed to us, and at the same time, there is the fruit, there is the reward. Uh, of her uh, hard work that uh, she um, had done. Now you see, <coughs> her bare fit, her empty fit, right? There was no slipper, no sandal, right? Smudged out the wriggle mark. Smudged means puffed up. The wriggle mark, the twisted mark of the snakes in the dust, right? So there is another wait, uh, another danger waiting for her, right? Because uh, just after crossing the river, on the way back to her home, right? Uh, there is a dusty ground on which uh, uh, she may come across the deadly snakes, right? So she was observing and walking. There was the thin singing of malaria mosquitoes also, you see, right? These mosquito bites are dangerous. It may spread malaria. So she was cautious about these two among the trees now, since it's already evening. And this track was much used at night by a morose old magna elephant, the tuskless one. And on top of that, there is another greatest danger right ahead of her, that is, when it is dark in this very forested area, there is the sadness of meeting with Magna Elephant. Right? Magna is a name given by the uh, Tamarians to the elephant which are tuskless. They don't have tusk. They are male of course, but uh, they are Magna Elephant. Okay? So sometimes, right, uh, the person may meet uh, such uh, uh, dangerous elephants on the way. Right? So Sibia. Uh, is still surrounded with so dangerous uh, I mean, okay, animals around her, right? But Sibia was not thinking of any of them, but she did not think any, right? Neither she was afraid of snake, nor mosquitoes that will spread malaria, right? Nor uh, the magna elephant, right? She was having a smile on her face because what she got, right? She got the best thing in her life, what she was perhaps waiting for years. Now see, the stars came out. So by then, the stars were peeping in the sky. It's already dark. She noticed. She looked up in the sky and saw it. On the way back, she met her mother, out of breath, come to look for her and scolding. But on the way, she met her mother because the mother had already reached home. Uh, she had put back her load and uh, when she turned back to see where her daughter Sibia was, she found missing, right? So she was worried where the daughter could have gone. So she was uh, uh, looking uh, for her child and met when she was when she was returning right and when she met the mother the mother started right showing her worry by scolding her where you have been why are you late what are you doing so many questions were asked i did not see till i was home that you were not there right so the mother says right i did not look back to see right that you were there or not because i knew that you are with me but when i reached home right you were missing the mother said I thought something must have happened to you, right? So the mother showed her worry that uh, uh, something uh, wrong might have gone with the daughter, Sibia. So she came back to see her, right? And Sibia, bursting with her story, cried. Something did, right? And uh, Sibia, right, bursting with her story, she was very happy to relate what uh, story she had now, right? And she said, something has happened. I found a blue bit for my necklace look. And she took out that very blue bit and showed it to her mother as if it is a reward for her right and whatever stories he said is not false that is very true right that was the proof nice he showed and here ends the story so you see what uh, heroic task did Sibia make though she was a small girl of 12 years right 
So it tells you that <clears throat> uh, something uh, important for someone may be uh, important for the other, right? As you know that the woman was in need of help, right? Because uh, she was uh, completely uh, being uh, eaten up by uh, the crocodile there, right? So had she been not uh, um, been as a goddess out there, right? Her life uh, would have come to an end, right? So when she helped her, right? And you saw what gift she got. She got the blue bead, right? What she was waiting for, what was her desire, what was her want since a long time, right? So, and the other thing that we learn in the chapter is uh, courageous deeds can save the community, right? So you need to be courageous. At the time of need, you need to be courageous, right? Uh, you should not be afraid when somebody is in need of help. So Sibia was noticing the Guzur woman and uh, her uh, um, uh, difficulty, what she faced in the, in the river. So if Sibia was not um, alert enough to go and help her, perhaps the woman, the Guzur woman would have died. Right? But Sibia kept all aside and showed her courage. Right? And uh, when somebody uh, shows the courage, right, uh, there is always, uh, you can say, uh, mm, uh, a compliment to provide to such, uh, uh, such uh, uh, you can say, sacrifices. Right? And uh, Sibia really did a great surprise and a great sacrifice in order to help the visual woman. Right? So this is what we saw in this story, right? the blue bit written by Nora Burke. Hope you like this story, though this story is uh, now omitted in the chapter, in the syllabus, right? So yet uh, you may take this as a lesson what we have learned, right? So this brings an end of our textbook treasure trove. That was the last story that was uh, remained with us and uh, here we have completed uh, the entire textbook treasure trove. So in our next meeting, our next online class, we will now see uh, the remaining portion of our textbook, uh, The Merchant of Venice. Thank you so much.